Good evening, and welcome to the 17th annual Seymour Martin Lipset Lecture on Democracy in the World. I'm Martin Loken, Minister of Political Affairs of the Embassy of Canada to the United States, and it's an honor to be hosting this event virtually with our partners at the National Endowment for Democracy. Normally, we'd gather here in the Embassy's Theatre for this annual event, hopefully next year. Meanwhile, thank you again for joining us online as we continue the important work of promoting and protecting democracy. I know we all look forward to hearing from tonight's featured speaker, Dr. Minxin Pei, who will be introduced shortly. Professor Lipset was American, but as many of you know, he devoted much of his career to research in Canada as a way to gain insight to the democratic developments in the U.S. and the world. And so it's fitting that the Embassy hosts this event each year. Advancing democracy is a core value that underpins Canada's foreign policy and international assistance. It contributes to peace and security, prosperity, sustainable development, and the rules-based international order. Unfortunately, over the last 15 years or so, the world has witnessed significant democratic backsliding in many countries. We are witnessing a troubling trend towards authoritarianism. And it's come to a head in 2020 as the entire world copes with the impacts of COVID-19. We've all become intimately familiar with the many ways COVID-19 has accelerated the integration of digital technologies into nearly every aspect of our lives. While this has brought us enormous benefits, it has also accelerated the rise of digital authoritarianism, the use of technology to scale human rights violations, attack democracy, and erode the rule of law. Some states have also seized on the pandemic to manipulate information and spread disinformation. Their narratives seek to sow doubt about the origins of the virus, discredit democratic responses to COVID-19, and question the value of multilateralism. It is imperative for liberal, democratic countries to work together to sharpen an, our understanding of these threats and to address them effectively and cooperatively. Canada remains committed to this endeavour. We're working to counter threats to democracy and reinforce societal resilience through an approach that maintains respect for human rights, fundamental freedoms and the rule of law. In early 2020, we launched a multi-stakeholder task force on artificial intelligence and human rights at the Freedom Online Coalition, bringing together over 30 countries, academics, industry and civil society experts to push back against authoritarian uses of AI and chart a different way forward. We are leveraging the G7 Rapid Response Mechanism, which was initially established to identify and respond to foreign threats to democracies, to coordinate strategies to counter threats and disinformation related to COVID-19. We're also working with partner countries and organizations to develop concrete initiatives to address foreign state-sponsored information manipulation to ensure we coordinate on our responses to the pandemic and to call for a democratic and human rights-based approach to addressing the health, economic and social challenges we face today. We recognize that our efforts to advance democracy go beyond protecting against external threats and extend to addressing challenges and shortcomings within our own democratic systems. Democracy's ability to harness debate and self-scrutiny is one of its great strengths. It isn't always a pretty process to watch, but it can be counted on to confer a resilience that is unmatched by any other form of government. And that's a proposition that I think our good friends at Partners at the National Endowment for Democracy would agree with. It's an organization that has done so much to grow and strengthen democratic institutions around the world. And that's why the Embassy is very proud, once again, to work with Ned to bring you the annual Lipset Lecture. And with that, I'd like to pass the floor to the President of Ned, Carl Gershom, for some additional introductory remarks. Thank you. Merci. Thanks so much, Martin, for that introduction. And thanks also to you and to Laura Castingay and her team at the Canadian Embassy for your partnership and for your support. The joint 
U.S. Canadian sponsorship of this lecture carries on the legacy of Marty Lipset, who is the most important comparative analyst of the two great democracies of North America, and also a strong advocate of U.S.-Canadian cooperation in advancing democracy around the world. I want to thank the Johns Hopkins University Press and George Mason University, which are the donors for this 17th Lipset Lecture, and also the Ned staff who have worked so hard to organize this event, especially Melissa Ayton, Ryan Arick, and Mike Ruzinski. Above all, I want to thank Sydney Lipset, who has done so much to promote this first ever virtual Lipset Lecture. The need to hold the lecture virtually this year has its obvious disadvantages, and I regret that we can't be together as before at the Canadian Embassy. But the online format also has the advantage of greatly expanding our reach to new and wider audiences on the critically important issue that Minjin will address this evening of totalitarianism's brutal hold on China. Since the audience is so large and spread so widely, I want to take advantage of having this platform to say to our friends and other freedom-loving people in Hong Kong, in Tibet, in East Turkestan, and of course, in mainland China as well, and to those who are in exile from these lands, that you are not alone. We remember Liu Xiaobo, and with him we believe, as he said at his closing statement at his trial, that Lee Bullman read at the Nobel ceremony, that China will in the end become a nation ruled by law where human rights reign supreme.